out this session on uh, kind of the future of uh, broadcasting and going live on Twitter, uh, specifically with sports. Uh, my name is Brian Acosta. I'm director of digital at the Sports Video Group. We're kind of the trade association for people who work behind the scenes in sports television and now sports video uh, in general for whatever that platform may be. Um, you can see kind of all of what we're about at sportsvideo.org and done talking about myself. Uh, so we're here to talk about Twitter, obviously. So we're very uh, pleased to be joined by three kind of experts in the field, one who's very much an expert uh, in it, and Laura Froelich, uh, Jason Coyle from Stadium, and uh, Raphael Poplik from the Players Tribune, who's really been one of the kind of the hot media properties going on in the industry right now. And we're going to kind of talk about their kind of current strategies in going live on Twitter. Live social video has really kind of taken the sports video production and um, yeah, content industry by storm over the last maybe 18 months or so. Um, so it's been very interesting to see how people come up with unique creative ideas uh, for different types of content. And these folks will all kind of get to talk about their experience with that. Um, so I want to start with Laura, obviously, since the, uh, she's the woman of the hour as we're talking about live on Twitter here. Um, it, 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 however long ago it was now, maybe four or five months ago, when the, uh, when the Thursday night football package went elsewhere, it seemed like there was a preemptive uh, kind of obituary writing of what video on Twitter was going to be. And instead, you guys have completely flipped the script and over the past few months have struck numerous partnerships, become more aggressive than you've ever been uh, in terms of video, specifically with sports. So what's it kind of been like to be a part of all that process? And how have you kind of seen this uh, kind of formulate in front of you? Yeah, it's been really, really phenomenal to see it all evolve. Really, the evolution started, though, um, you know, probably about four years ago when we said there's all this incredible conversation happening on the Twitter platform around sports. Um, you know, it's live, it's open, it's public, so you have everyone chiming in on their favorite plays or who's the best athlete. Um, you may have seen, actually, just this morning, we released a, a new marketing campaign spot uh, around our See Every Side campaign. Um, so check that out after the session on at Twitter. Um, but, you know, so really the, the live public conversational nature of Twitter really fuels um, fans coming to our platform to see what's happening in sports right now. And about four years ago, what we said was, you know, wouldn't it be incredible if we had not only all this really rich conversation around sports on the platform, but what if we had video content, highlights of that incredible touchdown or that amazing dunk that could fuel the conversation and enrich it for fans even further? So with that, we created our Amplify program, which brings incredible premium content from partners to the Twitter platform and allows advertisers to align their messages with that content and distribute it to their target audiences across, across Twitter. So it really gets fantastic content into the timelines of fans, so they win. The advertisers win because they get to align themselves with this premium content. And then uh, you know, our, our partners win because they get even more distribution than, than they could have imagined uh, only tweeting organically. So that program has been incredibly successful. We have about 300 partners in 25 countries around the world. And so the, the next logical iteration from that is, you know, what if we have not only the video highlights, what I sometimes call the game around the game, but the actual live games themselves and other live content that we know our fans have an appetite for. What if we could bring all of that content together with the conversation all in one experience on Twitter? So our first foray into that was our partnership with the NFL last year. Uh, we were incredibly pleased with that, uh, with that partnership, as was the NFL. We were able to deliver them an increasingly elusive audience. So the audience that we are able to bring to our live content is, is very young. It's you know, people who are cutting the cord, cord cutters, cord nevers that we hear about so much these days. And, and we're able to, to bring this incredible content, like I said, with the conversation all in one experience. So it's, um, it's you know, people who are under 35 actually represent 75% uh, of the live audience. And actually, 55% are under 25. Uh, so, you know, again, complementary to, to the TV audience for, for the NFL last year. We were both really pleased, like I said. And, and Brandon, as you mentioned, that really kicked off, um, you know, a, a slew of partnerships that we, it's, you know, so much so that we had 800 hours of live streaming video in Q1. 
And of that 51% of sports, which you know came as no surprise to, to anyone on, on my sports team, um, we're pretty biased, but um, you know, there really is that huge appetite among sports fans on our platform. And so you know, with that, with these new partnerships, um, we're super excited about, in particular, the partnerships that we've struck um, with Jason and Stadium and, and RAF and the Players' Tribune. And I'm excited for them to tell you more about those. Yeah, we've got two of your partners here. There was the potential for three here. There was rumors that we were going to have yeah. maybe a former player. Yeah. That, and then he heard that there was going to be three angry Jets fans on the panel. And I think he ran away. You, so. can, you can blame me for that one in particular. So <laughs> that was yeah. Stax Harrison. We didn't want him coming on stage after he <laughs> Screwed us Jets fans over going to the it's, G-Men. It's probably better for him yeah, because if you, if you get me in front of him, forget it. <laughs> but I was just going to jump in, you know, to a lot of Laura's points, where the industry is headed as far as value uh -huh. from a marketplace standpoint, from a fan standpoint, a lot of what is being discussed here, whether it's live, whether it's sports, premium content, video, these are all the things that are really being accelerated in the marketplace and things that I think we as publishing companies are really focused on. And when you have a distribution platform like Twitter that has the scale that it has, the audience that it has, it, it makes all the sense in the world to embrace those. And for us at the Players' Tribune, you know, we were created two and a half years ago. You can't solely be relying on bringing fans to your own and operated platform. You also, at the same time, have to really embrace a distributed content model. And the fact that we're able to do that with Twitter based on as Laura mentioned, many years of history of working with sports partners, but now going to where we are today with live programs, we couldn't be more happy to kind of lean in, if you will, on the platform. And um, our, our show, Verified, I think is, is very, shares the same content sensibilities as Twitter insofar as we are bringing newsmakers, in our case, athletes directly with fans and cutting out that middleman. And I think Twitter's been doing that from the onset, and that's what we're trying to do at the Players' Tribune as well. So this new live show that we're doing is just a logical extension. Yeah, it's a perfect partnership. I think we were saying earlier, you know, it's in our DNA, it's in your DNA. So it's, it's great to, to bring that together and give, you know, give fans that direct access. So I would love to hear a little bit more about Verified uh, from your perspective, because in the first couple of years, the Players' Tribune has kind of built its rep on uh, well-crafted written text pieces from yep. athletes um, and real big influencers. Um, how different is it having kind of bringing that same feel and same style and transferring that over to video, specifically live video? Well, I think video in this day and age, mobile video, mm -hmm. I mean, video, video, video is all you hear in the industry and, mm -hmm. and mobile video for sure. Any media company that starts today really has to diversify their content offering. Uh, and for us, yeah, we, we kind of landed our brand sensibility on the long form written piece. But if you look at our content mix today, it's much more video focused. We even launched a podcast network. And with live, this opportunity, we, we don't have a 24 seven network. Um, you know, and, and you'll speak to a little bit of your aspirations there. We don't have that. So for us to embrace some of these new technologies, these new platforms that allow us to take our first person athlete content, which is all very trusted. We've worked with over 1,500 athletes. And to create that authentic premium content in a live environment on Twitter was just a, a no brainer. And we were very excited that we were uh, <laughs> able to work with Lauren team to be a featured partner. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason, we'd love to kind of get a little bit of a, a boilerplate, if you will, on Stadium. It's a relatively new property, so if you're wondering what the heck is Stadium, I'm sure Jason will be happy to inform you. Yeah, um, and, previous and, iterations of Silver Chalice, 120 Sports, yeah. the acquisition of the American Sports Network. Um, so kind of give us, what is Stadium? Yeah. And by relatively new, you mean haven't launched? Hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's pre uh, pretty we, as new as it can get, yeah. We are a national sports network launching in just a couple of weeks, nationally on television, but also simultaneously uh, cleared for all digital platforms. And that's why we're, we're here today. We're owned by a collection of prominent rights holders of major media companies, Major League Baseball, the NHL, PGA Tour, Sinclair Broadcasting Group has been in the news quite a bit recently, um, Time Inc., and Silver Chalice. And we have a really great programming mix that I think gets to some of what Laura is talking about and where we're going. We have exclusive live events, uh, college football games, men's college basketball games, among many, many others, a daily live studio operation, 365 days a year, um, fully at scale, hundreds of classic events, original programming, 
and all formatted in a couple of different ways. One is a fully national, fully programmed 24 by 7 uh, linear presentation that looks and will look very much like the television product. Mm -hmm. And always on, fully programmed, worrying about day parts, worrying about lead-ins and lead-outs, um, persistent graphics and ticker, cross-promotion, a highly integrated linear presentation. But at the same time, everything is also made simultaneously available on demand. So deconstructing everything that we're doing on a linear basis and immediately publishing our segments or our game parts tagged by team player sport. So it's available on a personalized on-demand basis, fully live and simultaneous, simultaneous with the linear, linear presentation. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about getting television quality content and things that are very traditional in their approach, but in front of new audiences and reaching um, you know, restarting in, in today's media landscape that enables us to do things um, like, like our Twitter partnership that is, that really is thrilling for us. I'm literally, I'm not saying that just because I'm sitting next to you <laughs> and because that's the point of the panel. I mean, as we go, you're gonna see, it's not just, Laura and I were talking, it's not just, oh, we have a television network, let's put it on Twitter and people mm -hmm. can watch. That in itself is cool, but it's just the start for what we wanna do and I think really, really we can transform media in a couple ways, take a couple paces forward by what we're able to do together. We yeah, I mean, one of the things that I love so much about what we're able to do together is it really plays into our philosophy that Twitter can serve what we sometimes call underserved audiences. So there are fans for games out there that, that can't find their team to watch them on TV. Um, and so our ability to, to bring games to fans that couldn't otherwise watch them um, and also to infuse the, the games with the conversations from all those avid fans in that one experience, I'm really, really excited to do that. We have a little bit of a preview video of what Stadium is all about, okay. so uh, let's hit that. Take care of our business every step of the way. But I like love me. Gaga's performance. We're gonna take you live right now. Wins the tour championship. Very cool. Um, seeing some of the stuff that's on there, one of the uh, early kind of talking points I want to get into with all of you um, is what type of content uh, resonates well on Twitter and why. I'm sure you get to see a lot of it. Uh, I feel like one of the interesting debates that goes on in the world of live social streaming right now, and Jason, you kind of alluded to it, it's not just taking what is a linear television network and just copying it, yeah, hit control alt and pasting it over that, into yeah, that Twitter. Would be, that'd be a massive mess. If <laughs> yeah. Right. So there's kind of this, we like, uh, you know, was said earlier during uh, when Dan Porter was on stage with the commissioner earlier, r raw, authentic, kind of unproduced can be just as successful and as something that's highly produced with a lot of graphics and a nice studio set and everything. How, there's room for both of them, I assume, and what do you kind of see as kind of that, how do you see that conversation kind of going forward? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, really our philosophy is let's listen to the conversation that's happening on the platform and see what fans are really craving. So, you know, and that's any number of things. So that can be live games. Um, it also, when we first were talking to the NBA about how we were going to expand our longstanding partnership with them into live, we did some research around the, the Twitter audience and their affinity for the NBA and, and why they come to Twitter. So really, they come to Twitter certainly during the game window, but also 24-7 to find out what's happening with their favorite players, with their favorite teams, what are the narratives happening around the league, you know, even things that, you know, like fashion and music. So we said, well, you know, that speaks to a need for a, an original show, which the NBA created for us, called The Warm Up on Thursday nights. So, and it speaks to all of those things, the narrative around the league, um, the, the pregame to the pregame, we called it. So, you know, what's happening for the games coming up that night. Um, and then, you know, like I was saying earlier, sort of these underserved audiences, you know, what kinds of content are they craving? Um, really, an, another one that, that surprised us a little bit was, you know, this explosion of, of conversation on our platform around esports. So, 
you know, really it's, it, it was dwarfing some of the traditional American sports leagues. And we said, you know, what if we had, you know, eSports on the platform and original content around eSports? And so we, we struck a deal with MTG. And we've been live streaming eSports tournaments. Of the 13 million unique users that watched the Halo World Championships, 10.3 million of them watched on Twitter. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, I think it's just finding out what fans want and, and working on partnerships that can bring that content to the platform together with the conversation all in one experience. Yeah, and I jump in and say from a, a media company standpoint, it's not a one size fits all model. You have to diversify your content mix. You have to diversify your video production, whether it's long form episodic or short form, a little bit more raw, like you said. And, and what you want to do is program to the specific channel. You, you can't just assume that you'll take one piece of content, put it everywhere, and of course it's going to work. That's just not how the distribution game works. Uh, so you really want to take a look at fan feedback and analytics to help inform that. Uh, but in the case of Twitter, you know, there's no doubt about it. It's where the real-time conversation, at least in sports, is happening. So you look at last Thursday, everyone was on Twitter getting ready for the NBA draft. I know I, as a Celtics fan, and I know that may be weird because I'm a Jets fan, and it's not because I like green and <laughs> white. Like green. <laughs> there's a story behind it. Um, all I was waiting to do, I was on Twitter just waiting and waiting and waiting for the moment of who are they going to pick? Are they going to trade to finally cash in the chips? Are they going to go with Tatum? Are they going to go with Jackson? And us as a publishing company, we had to be ready with our various assets, not only to be within the conversation, but hopefully to own the conversation. So we had a lot of banked video content that we knew we were going to release when Fultz was drafted, when Lonzo was drafted when Tatum was drafted. And you really need to have strategic planning in advance of big sports moments to take advantage of the Twitter platform. And now with live, that's, that's just yet another way you can take advantage of Twitter. And I, you know, we have yet to put one of our shows verified up, but we're really excited to get some audience intel as to what works, what doesn't work. Because we do know that everyone on Twitter is talking about our athlete community, on the field, off the field. So for us to bring those two audiences together and to cut out the middleman and let that direct conversation in a trusted way happen should be uh, highly entertaining. Yeah, well, what works, what doesn't work. As a programmer, this is, this is a, a dream for us. This is not waiting for the ratings to come out and mm -hmm. some sampling of people and sampling of markets. We know, as it happens, who's watching, how long, what's working, what's not. It's going to help us actually define our offering. Um, what do people want more of? What do people not like as much? How do they want to interact? Which, which part of the day? Which day itself? Um, it's going to be an unbelievable tool for us as we're trying to build the optimal offering. And so that, that feedback in real time is, is a critical element, just one. But it's, it's pretty amazing. And on the other side, we, we also affirmatively get to take what we believe is going to work and make sure that sports fans at scale, know that it's on. So when we have a, a game, a Lane Kiffin against Butch Davis game, we get a message, maybe Cleveland Browns fans, maybe USC fans or Alabama fans, anyone who would have an interest in watching that particular game, those particular coaches, and make sure that they know this elusive, fast-moving consumer, make sure that they know that that game's on, or even a segment as is coming up in the rally, one of our shows, hey, we're going to be talking about the Celtics in, in three segments. So in real time, messaging and drawing people into the conversation and then letting them actually drive it. We have our, our talent will actually be sitting there in real time watching tweets come in, mm -hmm. reacting, maybe reading them out loud, favoriting, um, uh, helping it drive and move the conversation ahead. So as programmers, it means it, it means that real-time feedback, and it also gives us a chance to create a different type of media that breaks down the wall between the studio and even our truck content. We will be sharing the tweets and the trends and the reactions right into the truck as games are being produced. So I think we're going to be able to see us move the entire industry ahead if we do it right. Now, speaking about moving the uh, industry forward, let's talk a little bit about mon monetization and sponsorship opportunities that come up as a result of this, obviously. Yes, uh, please. Hey, please, <laughs> please. I'm sure you would love yeah. to. Um, talk about uh, you know, pitching these kinds of programs to sponsors and how different is it? I, I mean, at the Players' Tribune, you're digitally born and bred from yep. the ground up, yep. so you're not maybe facing the same growing pains that a traditional broadcast entity might do if they're trying to get into the, to the digital game. Um, 
sponsors, I'm sure, want to attach themselves to a brand that's as cool as yours uh, right now. So how, is, how are those conversations going on, and how do you kind of change your sales and marketing people and uh, their mindset and letting them know, here's what's available for you to go out and sell? Yeah, well, first, if there's any marketers in the, off uh, in the audience, yes, please, we're all looking for advertising partners for these shows. Come um, talk to us afterwards. Yeah, I, I think as it relates, I could speak broadly second, but as it relates to this opportunity, live and sports are just two hugely attractive offerings. And if you're a marketer or you're an agency, they're always asking for something net new. What hasn't been done before? What's the new sexy? What's innovative in your arsenal? So for us to be able to say, hey, if you've grown to love the content that the Players' Tribune has done over the last two and a half years, then we've got our first live show in partnership with Twitter. You should jump on as a launch sponsor. And with the type of athletes that we're going to have in the mix, Carl Anthony Towns, AJ Green, Richard Sherman, it's, I don't want to say it's an easy sell because nothing is ever an easy sell. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, it's a confidence factor that you have when you go in that you have something that you know will move the needle. As it relates to our overall kind of marketplace approach to, to advertisers, um, we have been really focused on branded content first and foremost. And mm -hmm. I think advertisers want to become closer and closer to content and want to simply just they want to move away from simply just pre-rolls and banner advertisements that can be blocked by ad blockers. So they want something that's a little bit more deeply integrated. Sure. So that's what we're able to offer, authentic content, pairing it with athletes who have a high degree of knowledge or interest in the brand or, or the service or products of those brand. And we're able to bring it together with a flexible distribution model, one that lives on our channels, our social channels, our partner channels, and even the advertiser channel. So we've seen great success over the, you know, the past year and a half since we opened our door to brand partners. And we worked with the likes of Samsung and Chase and AFI and Gatorade and really premium partners. And I think with this show verified that we have here, I think the initial list is very strong. And you know, we're excited about what it could, what it could hold. Yeah, branded content for us is a critical piece of everything that we do for the reasons that you mentioned. Ad blocking, et cetera, of course. But we also just think it's a, a higher form of messaging the brand. And so our production team is, is close partners with our marketing team. And we sit down, and it's not just, OK, it's time to slap the logo, or it's mm -hmm. a billboard. Um, we do some of that, of course. But we actually sit down with the brand team, figure out what is your message, who are you trying to reach, and let's figure out how to build content that actually conveys that, not just slapping a logo on something that's already existing. But let's build programming that audiences are going to want that convey your brand in the timing to the right people and, and really, again, create more value than they can get elsewhere. And another thing with, with Twitter that we, we love is they're looking for, especially on the video side, they're buying ESPN. We're not asking them to stop buying ESPN, but they're looking for that unduplicated audience. Mm -hmm. ESPN and what to hit everyone. And for us, this is just a great opportunity to go out there and say, yes, the stalwart, and where is everybody else? And, and we have a really good shot at delivering the rest of that, of that media audience. So, so as they are combating these challenges, how, how are you and your team helping them along the way? Yeah, so you know, really it's, it's creating the most compelling offering that we can around live. And again, live isn't just the live show, because obviously live is, is simply a moment in time. It's that entire spectrum of the live show, the highlight clips, um, the replays, if, if that's in the offing from the partner. And so we create this whole um, you know, holistic opportunity for the advertiser to be part of the entire live experience of the fan. Um, and so, you know, again, it's, it's reaching those, those audiences that are becoming so elusive. You know, we've got um, those you know, 20, under 25-year-olds I was mentioning earlier. Um, we've got an audience that is increasingly mobile. You know, more than 90% of, of our audience accesses Twitter from their mobile device. And so, you know, if, if you're a marketer and you're having trouble reaching these audiences, and, you know, chances are you are, um, you know, Twitter really has a great opportunity for you to align with the incredible content that, that these folks are, are distributing through us. 
Uh, we'll get to some audience questions in just a few minutes, so get those ready. Um, but real quickly, I know this panel is supposed to be talking about live, but we should just kind of sneak in just kind of regular distribution models in general. Um, how are you, uh, what are some of the latest things that Twitter is kind of doing to help increase that reach and that engagement and more hyper-focused and hyper-customized either data or uh, reach opportunities for programs like uh, your partners sitting next to you? Yeah, so I mean, really, you know, Twitter is, um, has a treasure trove of data that we generate, you know, every second of every day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we understand what kinds of things fans are interested in by virtue of, um, you know, not only whom they follow um, and the the kinds of things that they uh, that they're tweeting themselves, but also, you know, what they're listening to on the platform. So, you know, what sorts of of conversations are they following in terms of hashtags that they search for, and and things like that. So, we have all of that rich data that we have at our disposal for advertisers to then promote the content of our content partners and get them even wider distribution than, than they could get on their own organically. Yeah, we, we've been really impressed with the level of um, commitment that Twitter on, on the product team has had to making this much more than just a linear television offering on, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are some exciting things that I think that, that Twitter's gonna be, be able to lead media too, just in terms of, of some of the things that Laura talked about. But it's been really a deep company-wide integration and just great support. So as programmers and, and um, suppliers, we've been, we're excited about where we're going uh, from here. Cool, cool. Uh, any questions from the audience? I'd love to get you guys involved. Nothing so far. Oh, they even turned the lights up on you. Now I can see <laughs> all your faces. Yeah, okay, yes, we got one right here. So we, we hear a lot about the, there's all this other stuff, but we've still hear, heard a lot about kind of traditional linear programming. So, you know, live highlights is one thing. What else is innovative in programming that you guys are seeing, that you guys are developing, uh, whether it's on the content side or advertising side or anywhere else? So I would say, you know, again, it's what we, we're innovating based on what we're hearing from fans on Twitter. We want to make their experience on our platform the best that it can possibly be. So, you know, we want to innovate in the kinds of content that we deliver to them, but ultimately our North Star is what are they talking about and let's make sure that we have content that can enrich and fuel that, that conversation and bring, again, the, so the live content and the conversation all in one experience. I would say an area where you'll see us innovate and iterate even further is fine tuning that conversation that you see together with the live content. So making sure that the very best tweets are in that timeline, but not only tweets from, from your fellow fans, but you can also see the tweets from you know, the, the beat writers who are covering the teams or, you know, experts uh, giving their, you know, their, their, expert co their expert commentary on what that content is. So really enriching the, the conversation so that you can, um, you know, to, to take a page from the, our, our marketing campaign that I mentioned earlier, which is hashtag see every side. You can see every side of what's going on in the content. You, because Twitter is this open platform, you can get all different perspectives. And you know, our job is really to make sure that we bring all of those perspectives to you so that as a sports fan, you're as, as informed as you can possibly be about um, the, the, the teams and players that you love. Yeah, for us, we're actually using uh, the conversation and the trends and, and everything that is bubbling up on Twitter to inform what we actually talk about. It informs our rundown. It informs how we stack the show. So it's not just throw something out there and see what happens. We're watching the trends and what people are actually um, talking about. We're not just defaulting in our A block to Red Sox Yankees. We're, we're looking at what is driving conversation in the moment. We have a flexible, real-time rundown being formed and it, it is informed highly by the moment on, on Twitter. So I, I think that in and of itself brings us um, ahead a little bit. Cool. Anybody else? Yes. Down right here. <laughs> She's here. Um, how are you seeing uh, brands work with you in engaging the millennial you know, the, or the sub-25Z 
category because there's a big, it seems to be a big breakdown between the brand valuations in the sub 25 category than in the over 35 category and it's being harder and harder to monetize that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what strategies are you working on you know, when, when, when it comes to that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's harder and harder because these audiences are harder and harder to reach, right? So it's, it's really just making sure, again, that we, we deliver the best content possible to, to reach those audiences and, and to bring those audiences and make them available to marketers. And we've had you know, a, a lot of success thus far in doing that. We have you know, advertisers like Ford and Verizon and Anheuser-Busch and you know, a slew of others who have been in from the very beginning on, on Amplify and have gone you know, through with us into, into live. And now with live and being able to demonstrate that we do reach these younger audiences, you know, we're getting you know, even more um, great response from, from marketers as well. See a hand towards the back there. So I would say, you know, really we are 100% focused on how we compete on the field and we compete only with ourselves. So, you know, we, we deliver um, the fastest, most engaging way to connect with your interests. Um, and really we feel that, you know, we are the, the best and, and the only place that can, can really do that in the moment. I thought you were a Jets fan. That was a very Bill Belichick answer. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Okay, yes, I see someone on the run up there. Um, how long are you expecting people to engage and watch your videos on Twitter? I mean, it's a platform where traditionally things are kept under 140 characters to keep them easily digestible. Yeah, great question. So, you know, traditionally, yes, you know, Twitter is 140 characters. When I started at Twitter almost three and a half years ago, literally everything was 140 characters of text, even photos and videos. So for video, you had to click on a link and then another one and potentially even another one just to get to the video. You know, now everything is presented media forward, as we say, so pre-expanded in the timeline and auto-playing. And that's really been fantastic in terms of giving fans um, easy access to really rich video content. In terms of how long they watch, you know, really it's, you know, it's delivering on the promise of great content. And if, if the content is there that, that really is engaging to the audience, then, then they'll stay for it. And I think it's also important that you don't solely rely on the live content. And that's mm -hmm. what we're doing with these programs. You're going to have ancillary content. You're going to have cut up versions of the content, whether it's best of or whatever it may be, which for those fans, maybe the younger folks who don't have the longer attention span will just get the quick snackable versions, but for those that want to have the full show and, and like the promise based on those clips, they can end up seeing the whole thing. Great. We've got time for one more if anyone uh, wants to hop in. Okay. Down in front. Yeah. This is uh, for Jason. So offering the channel 24-7 live on Twitter, how are you... Um, explaining that to the the traditional linear distributors as to why you know their customers have to basically pay to carry your channel um but you're offering it for free you know to anyone that wants to tune in on twitter well, that's a great question it's a free-to-air television offering as well so first we're going to be distributing via our sinclair partner via spectrum so it's a broadcast play first um, we won't end there, but there are 30 million digital antenna users in the United States right now and growing very fast. Um, so you can you pay $20 for a digital antenna and you can watch 50, 70 channels. None of them have a, a national sports network. So we're going to these audiences who already have perhaps moved away from a pay television model and we're taking them something for free as well and reaching them in their homes just with a different uh, delivery mechanism. Sure. All right, and we're kind of coming to the end here. Uh, Laura, we really wanted to thank you for joining us and sharing your expertise who are here with us today. Thank and you. to uh, Jason Raphael, thanks for you guys as well. Thanks. And good luck with everything going forward. Thank all right? you. Thanks, thank you.